My name is Steve Easley and I'm a construction consultant that specializes in helping builders build homes that are durable and long-lasting, energy efficient and comfortable, and healthy and safe to live in. I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida with Providence Homes and we're going to be producing a series of videos that help you, the consumer, see the construction practices they use that truly are a step ahead of all their competition. In this series of videos, we'll be learning about things like the uh, Home Energy Rating Score. Uh, we'll be learning about the um, Energy Star 100% Certified uh, Rating Checklist, which include the Thermal Bypass Checklist. That checklist really ensures that the insulation is going to be installed right, that there's not a lot of air leaks in the home or air infiltration. Uh, we'll also be learning about the HVAC Checklist, which is a big part of the Energy Star program. Uh, this checklist helps us ensure that our HVAC system, our heating and cooling system is uh, installed properly and it's properly designed as well as uh, the installation of the ductwork is uh, installed without leaks. Yeah. So first of all let's talk about the duct blast test. As we talked about earlier that homes can easily leak 10 to 25 percent of the energy of the ductwork out through leaks in the system and uh, so this test tells us basically how, how much leakage we have, right? That's correct. What we do is we'll uh, depressurize the ductwork to a, to a fixed level, and then we'll measure the airflow through the, duct, uh, through the uh, fan, and that pressure drop across the fan tells us what the leakage is. We'll also be learning about the water management checklist, which is a checklist that helps us build homes that are free from leaks and therefore moisture-related problems like mold. Uh, we'll also be learning what it means to build a conditioned attic where we have uh, our insulation spray applied to the bottom of the roof deck, which makes our attic a lot cooler and our HVAC equipment much more efficient. And so what we don't want to happen in a typical home is for that heated air in our attic to be sucked into our HVAC system. But in a non-vented or conditioned attic system like this, the whole system stays a lot cooler, your system is a lot more efficient, and your cooling bills are going to be a lot lower. One of the biggest contributors to your cooling bill is heat gain from the attic. All day long the sun bakes down on your roof, that gets absorbed in the roofing materials and the heat gets absorbed in the framing components and eventually that heat gets re-radiated into the attic and attics can get upwards of 120 to 150 degrees. And that can be problematic for a few reasons. Number one, our ductwork, like in every home, is up in the attic. And uh, the ductwork typically only has a couple of inches of insulation on it. So that means that 120 to 150 degree heat is being conducted through that ductwork, being absorbed into the air flowing through the HVAC system, which substantially heats up that air, which makes it more expensive for you to heat and cool your home. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to do, like we have here, a, what we call a conditioned attic or a non-vented attic. Traditional attics typically are ventilated. This is a non-ventilated attic, and the way that this works is that they spray foam the entire inside of the roof deck. And what that does then, that creates the thermal envelope at the top of the roof deck. So that heat from the sun does not re-radiate into the attic, heating up the attic. So we basically take the insulation that was on the attic floor and we move it up to the roof deck. Except in this case, we use spray foam because spray foam is a better insulator and a better air sealer. Example this here, outdoors, the temperature is about 95 degrees. In this attic right now, it's about 78 degrees. And here we see the chocolate bunny, it's not melting, and uh, this attic is perfectly comfortable being as comfortable as the house. Where typically these attics will only be about three to five degrees warmer than the house is. Now another thing that's important to recognize is that most homes have lots of duct leakage. Anywhere between 10 and 25 percent of the system's efficiency is lost through leaks in the ductwork. So for example, let's say we have the return air duct of our furnace, which is basically drawing air out of the inside of the house, going through the system and being cooled by, by the system. Well here we have a, a smoke generator and we're going to show you what happens when all that hot heated air from the attic gets sucked into the system. You can see how easy that is. You know, these systems have quite a bit of pressure difference across them. And so what we don't want to happen in a typical home is for that heated air in our attic to be sucked into our HVAC system. But in a non-vented or conditioned attic system like this, the whole system stays a lot cooler, your system is a lot more efficient, and your cooling bills are going to be a lot lower. Everybody wants an energy efficient home and the truth is most builders will tell you they build energy efficient homes. But the reality is many builders build only to code. And what does that mean? That means it's the least energy efficient home that you can build according to law. So as a consumer, how do you know you're truly getting an energy efficient home? Well, the good news is um, the Residential Energy Services Network has developed a home energy rating scale. Now this scale is from zero to 150. A typical home like you might be living in would be around 130. 
pretty poorly built and insulated typically. Or we could go all the way down here to the best home, which is a home that's zero, which means that it produces as much energy as it uses, and its net energy bill would be zero. Now in Florida, most of the homes by law have to be built to an energy code, and this energy code built home would have a scale of about 86. Providence homes are down here in this 40 to 50 range, which is about 30 five to 40 percent lower than uh, a typical code build home. Now it's really important that you recognize that when you're shopping for a home you want to make sure that you're getting a home that has an actual tested HERS score not as designed. In other words sometimes builders will say well we have a low HERS score but it's only as that home is designed not how it's built and tested. So what you want to look for in a builder is one that actually certifies and tests every home by an independent third-party rating. Another thing to look for is the Energy Star label. Now some builders will basically just put an Energy Star logo on their website because maybe they just build one home a year or maybe they just use Energy Star appliances. But as a consumer what you want is to find a builder who has 100% of all their homes Energy Star certified. Now the certification is really really important because these folks go through a process of inspections and checklists and most importantly third-party testing where they do duct blast testing, they do blower door testing, they measure the energy efficiency of the home in terms of its their infiltration rate, they look at the efficiency of the HVAC system, and they go through a series of inspections and tests that make sure that this home actually is going to perform as it's designed for its HERS score. These people aren't employed by the builder, they're actually independent third-party raters, and that way you're assured that the home is actually going to perform as it's designed and, more importantly, as it's built. A critical component to high-performance homes is using the ENERGY STAR checklist to make sure that we design and build the house according to the Energy Star protocols. Now, the Energy Star program has three basic checklists. They have the thermal bypass checklist, they have the uh, HVAC checklist, and the water management checklist. I'm here with Michael Donahue from Jacksonville Building Science, and you're the one that actually goes out and tests and certify these homes. We certainly do. What's really exciting about this is that Providence goes above and beyond. They, with they'll stop construction of the house while we do the inspection and they will not proceed until everything has passed the inspection. So let's talk about the thermal bypass checklist. Okay. Well, one of the most critical components of the checklist is to make sure that the insulation is installed properly. This cavity here between the 2x6 framing has to be completely filled with insulation. There can't be any voids or crevices because that'll cause convection. Right. And also, if the insulation is compressed, uh, what makes an insulator insulate is the ability to trap air. So if you compress it, it can't trap the air. In fact, insulation that's poorly installed um, is about 30% less efficient than insulation that's properly installed. Typically, in a code-built home, the insulation will be pushed into the wall cavity like this, and they won't bother to separate it around the, the wiring or the plumbing. And it's really important that you do that because you will create those, those voids. And part of this thermal bypass checklist inspection is they make sure the insulation is not only installed right, but also that all the gaps and cracks and holes that cause air to leak in are going to be sealed up. So these homes are tight enough to uh, you know, prevent unnecessary air infiltration that costs you, the consumer, money. Yeah, so when we look at, think about advanced framing, like here for example, instead of seeing studs at 16 inches on center, they're actually at 24 inches on center, which allows us to get more insulation. In addition to that, they're also using 2x6 studs, which are deeper, which allows more insulation, uh, than standard 2x4s, which would only have an R value of about 13. This has an R value of, of 20, so there's substantially more insulation as well. Providence Homes uses advanced framing techniques. They certainly do, and that's the primary reason for doing it. They want to make the house more energy efficient. Obviously, with advanced framing, you can put more insulation in the house, so it's, it's a good thing to do. Now, the next checklist is the HVAC checklist, and that stands for Heating, Ventilating, and Air Conditioning System. In other words, every home has a, a furnace and an air conditioner and ductwork, and how that system is installed is really critical and designed to the overall performance of the home. So let's talk about the design of the system, because Providence Homes, they specifically engineer a system for every home that they build. Energy Star requires that uh, the installation of the HVAC system be inspected by the energy reader to make sure that uh, there are no severe crimps or, or bends in the ductwork so that the airflow is, is as designed. Above and beyond all that, Steve, as the designer for Providence, as the mechanical designer for Providence, we also know uh, exactly how much airflow is going to be required in every room. We know what size system is going to be, uh, what size system is required because we did the load calculation. We did the, the specific, that house specific design. Yeah, oftentimes builders just hand that over to an HVAC contractor and they engineer it as the best of their ability, but they're not mechanical engineers. So That's absolutely true. Um, and, and that makes Providence so unique. 
Nobody else that I know of actually has someone uh, or has a mechanical engineer do their HVAC design. And that makes sure that the ducts are going to be properly sized. Oftentimes in homes, ductwork is undersized. The HVAC equipment is grossly oversized. And so what you end up with is massive temperature swings, issues associated with efficiency, and certainly uh, higher levels of humidity because the unit doesn't run long enough to dehumidify the air. It also affects the homeowner's comfort because if the system isn't designed properly, it can be very noisy. And as we all know, we don't want to hear unnecessary noise. So Providence has theirs designed specifically for the house. And so when the system is running, you don't hear it. It's very quiet. And also uh, part of that checklist is making sure that the ductwork is adequately sealed. Typically in homes, we see duct leakage upwards of uh, you know 10 to 25 percent. That means that roughly 25 cents out of every dollar you spend on heating and cooling is being lost through leaks in the ductwork. That also lets in lots of dust too. So uh, the last checklist is the water management checklist. The last thing we want to do is build a home that has leaks and ultimately that can lead to water moisture problems as well as mold related issues. So let's go out to a house and actually look at some of the things that are on this water management checklist. An important component of every Energy Star certified home is the water management checklist. An important component of that is the weather resistive barrier. Now what the weather resistive barrier does is that it prevents water that gets in behind the cladding from being in contact with building components like the structural sheathing and the wall framing. And what's unique about a Providence home is that they use Tyvek which is a breathable weather resistive barrier. A lot of builders use cheaper perforated building wraps which are nothing more than just plastic with holes punched in it. So another important part of the homes that they build is the window flashing system. And this window flashing system uh, is what we call pan flashing. It's a one piece, multiple piece of flashing that goes around the entire window component so that if water does get in behind the window, it has the capacity to drain and get out and it protects those components uh, from water and moisture damage. One of the most impressive features about a Providence home is the battery of tests they do on each and every home that they build. With me today is um, Michael O'Donohue from Jacksonville Building Science, and you're the actual guy, that your team comes out here and actually tests every home. Yes, we do. Let's it's talk really about good. some of the tests that you do. Well, typically Providence will reach out to us about a week or so before closing and ask, ask us to come out and do the Energy Star testing. So we come out and we'll do the blower door test, we'll do the duct blaster test, and then we also go above and beyond that by doing a test and balance, which really isn't required by Energy Star, but it's the right thing to do. It adjusts the airflow in all the rooms. To make it's sure. important to note that what makes an Energy Star builder a certified builder is they build 100% of their homes that are all Energy Star, which includes not only the checklist we talked about earlier, but also this whole battery of tests that can take anywhere from a half a day to a day. That's correct. Yeah. So first of all, let's talk about the duct blast test. As we talked about earlier, that homes can easily leak 10 to 25% of the energy of the ductwork out through leaks in the system. And uh, so this test tells us basically how, how much leakage we have, right? That's correct. What we do is we'll uh, depressurize the ductwork to a, to a fixed level, and then we'll measure the airflow through the, duct, uh, through the uh, fan, and that pressure drop across the fan tells us what the leakage is. Yeah, so the, well, the number on that fan is the actual amount of leakage. That's correct. And what do you shoot for? Typically in a Providence home, the, the total test is around four, four and a half percent, so well below the Energy Star standard. And the outside test is very low because it's a foam attic and there really isn't very much to the outside. So anywhere between zero and, and one percent for the, for the outside test. Yeah, so bottom line is this house has very little duct leakage. These ducts don't leak. Now, it's really important when you're designing HVAC systems that you deliver the right amount of air to the room. So these systems are highly engineered to make sure that you achieve the comfort you have. So if you have leaks or kinks in your duct work, you know, you wouldn't know it unless you do the proper testing. That's correct. One of the unique features of a Providence home is that we do airflow testing above and beyond uh, the Energy Star test. The airflow test allows us to measure the air coming out of all the grills in each room, and we can compare that against what the load calculation calls for and then make whatever adjustments are required. Yeah, so the basic idea is you engineer these rooms to have a certain amount of airflow. This is the test that determines if you got the right amount of airflow. Exactly. And what we typically do is we'll just take this analysis flow hood, put it up to the grill, push the button, and wait 22 seconds while the, uh, the sensor captures the airflow, uh, the pressure, and the humidity and transmits it to the computer, which then does the analysis for us. So what that's doing is actually measuring the airflow that's gonna be coming out of that duct. That's correct. Yeah. Once we're done, once we've captured uh, the airflow out of all the ducts and, and tabulated it on the computer, then we can then compare it against the, what the load calc calls for and go back and make all the necessary adjustments, adjustments so that the air in every room falls within the tolerance uh, of the load calculation. And so the next test and final test that we're going to talk about today is um, a blower door test. And this is where we actually measure the air tightness of the home. 
And the goal is, is to have a tighter house rather than a leaky house because, again, you don't want to pay the heat and cool in the outdoors. So tell us about the test you typically do on a private zone. We draw the air out of the house and the airflow, again, across the fan, the airflow tells us exactly how leaky the house is. And like you say, we want the air changes per hour to be as low as possible. Because this is a Providence home, the standard or the limit that we accept is two uh, air changes per hour of two. And typically the Providence home is somewhere in the neighborhood of around one and a half, occasionally as low as uh, 0.5. And one of the advantages of the conditioned attic, the spray foamed attic, is you don't get near as much dust in the home and also you don't get a lot of moisture in through the attic ventilation system as well. That's correct, yes. These houses are, are very tight. They're very dry and uh, the homeowners are, are very comfortable. And it's important to recognize that the beauty of this testing is that it helps all the subcontractors know that their work is going to be evaluated and measured on every home. And some builders will only test a couple of houses out of all that they build uh, if in a particular subdivision, for example. They test each and every one. And you don't know unless you measure and you can't improve unless you test. That's correct. There has to be oversight. Otherwise, you just don't know what you have. And we test every Providence home. And if there is a failure, and occasionally there is one, the contractor comes out, makes the repair, we come in behind them and test again to make sure it's a pass. So the key to a high performance home is really designing energy efficiency in, making sure that your crews follow all these checklists and making sure that you evaluate and test each and every home to make sure they perform in the real world like they do on the drawing board. Absolutely. To learn more about the benefits of building an energy efficient Providence home, visit myprovidencehome.com. Providence Homes, your hometown builder.